Okay, we're uh, certainly several kilometers along strike to the south and significantly just a little bit into the foreland from the last stop looking at Seneca Rocks. And right out in front of you here, you can see a low range of hills and there are some outcrops there that look a lot like Seneca Rocks. Uh, they are not the big outcrop we previously looked at, but they're exactly the same thing. We're a long strike and indeed that low range of hills with the vertical beds of sort of the, the white to gray sandstone are the exact same feature. It's the steeply dipping to actually, in some cases, overturn back towards me, forelimb of a large anticline whose back limb is the big ridge on the horizon there. So if you can look very closely, I'm not sure the video resolution will catch it or not, but at the very top of the ridge in the distance, uh, there are some prominent cliffs there. Those are the same Silurian Age sandstone that you see here in the foreground. Uh, again, very steeply dipping, in many cases vertical, in some cases actually overturned towards me, towards the foreland. Now what's interesting is that I am standing several hundred meters above those outcrops. Behind me is actually the highest peak in West Virginia, Spruce Knob, uh, just shy of 4,900 feet above sea level. Uh, those those outcrops there are, are probably uh, 2,000 feet, maybe 2,500 feet, about 800 meters below me. Uh, this is interesting, of course, because I'm standing in what would have been effectively the uh, sort of the, the foot wall almost to the frontal thrust structures uh, that led to the deformation or enabled the formation of the overturned anticline that we're looking at and whose forelimb is sort of etched out and expressed so dramatically uh, in the way that you see at Seneca Rock. So if you want to imagine the actual assembly of these structures, the actual movement on the thrust or thrusts that develop this anticline that we're looking at, you have to restore a whole lot of rock back here. Certainly you have to restore rock on top of what I'm standing on as well, but at the end of the day you have to accept the fact that we're missing many kilometers of section here and the architecture that you see today is the very deeply eroded uh, remains of that essentially. We're looking down into the Potomac River Valley. That's an Atlantic Basin river system. Uh, so it's flowing out to the northeast and it will make its way out across the Blue Ridge and the Piedmont, the deeply eroded uh, metamorphic or orogenic core of the Appalachians and ultimately out to the Atlantic. Behind me is the Ohio River Basin that drains to the continental interior. So not only is this area uh, the, the Allegheny structural front, or sort of the, the forelandmost limit of very well expressed thrust tectonics, the structural contrasts between this steeply dipping to overturn forelimb and the very gently dipping, uh, almost flat lying but broadly synclinal structure behind me is also a regional drainage divide today. So it's a really complex area but to try to visualize what you're seeing here prior to deep erosion, I'm going to try to, uh, try to show you some modern day analogs, some frontal anticlines or nearly frontal anticlines in other fold thrust belts that show a similar structure and maybe we'll let you get a sense of what this would have looked like prior to the many kilometers of erosional removal that have led to the development of this landform structure uh, that you see here today.